What's up guys, this is Linda and welcome back to Radical Punch. This is our fourth episode and we decided to step our game up. So today's topic is radical data journalism. Data journalism is a technique where data is being collected, structured and analyzed. The results of this filtering process can be used in a meaningful way, for example for a radical visualization. As a data journalist, you obviously have to deal with data sets. And as Dana Boyd, a researcher from the Microsoft Labs, already mentioned in her paper Six Provocations for Big Data, uh, data's value comes from the patterns that can be derived by making connections between pieces of data about an individual, about individuals in relation to others, about groups of people, or simply about the structure of information itself. So, what kind of data could be interesting to us? Living in a representative democracy, political data sets from official institutions are particularly interesting to us. We could look at party donations, just like Rigo Eich did, or we could also look at household budgets, like David McCandles did, but we decided to keep it very simple. We're just going to look at two very basic things. Who is actually representing us and where do they come from? Bundestag.de is the official website of the Parliament of the Federal Republic of Germany. It includes an overview of parliamentary documentations, press statements and a complete list of members of the 17th German Bundestag. Looking at the websites, we thought, wow, this is the perfect foundation for the data that we needed to work with. But what we needed is actually a machine-readable version so that we can work with the data. So this is where data journalism comes in. We're just going to collect the data ourselves. For the scraping part, we used the platform Needlebase to create a new database where we can collect and include the information we're interested in. So now that we have the data, let's look at the specific information that we're looking for and let's start refining the data set. For the refining process, we decided to use Google Refine. Once our new project is created, we can start refining the data. So here's the table with the data. So now that we have all the data from each and every member of the parliament, question is, how do we visualize it? How do we get the members of the parliament on the map? We decided to just stick with Google and use a service called Google Fusion Tables. Okay, so you can import the table into Google Fusion Tables and you will see your data again. Now you want to visualize your data on a map, so just click on Map and your data will be shown on a Google Map. So now we have the map with all the members of Parliament and you can look at your area of interest and you can see who's actually representing you there. So this is a very nice first step of data journalism, but let's get more into detail and let's look at another data set that might be interesting. A few weeks ago we observed the federal state election in Berlin and we decided that we wanted to have a radical interactive visualization which shows us right away which party won in the respective districts of Berlin. This bubble tree visualization provides a very quick and nice overview of how the Berliners voted. The small bubbles at the periphery represent the respective boroughs of Berlin. The cool thing with the bubble tree visualization is that you can basically zoom into your data. So let's look at Friedrichshain Kreuzberg for example. Here you can see the detailed information about how many votes actually went to which party. So I think we hit you with enough radical punches today. Again, we provide a tutorial, so feel free to experiment with the data sets. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to share your visualizations with us, hit us up via Twitter.